evening, Fredonia. You're listening to The Local Lowdown on WCVF 88.9 The Voice and WDVL 89.5 The Inferno. I'm your co-host and promotions lead, Aaron. Hello, I am your executive producer, a r lead, and co-host, Jordan. Hey, yo, it's Sebastian, the technical director of The Local Lowdown. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's show is brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems in a group effort to promote and showcase the local music scene here in Fredonia, but also West New York at large. Welcome to The Local Lowdown. On this episode, we have our guest for this week, Puddle. So how about you just introduce yourself (laughs) and tell us about your relationship with music? Um, (laughs) Hi, I'm Puddle. I go by Puddle. My name's Ariel Weichman. Um, I've been making music, like, on my computer since I was 14, and... I was a ukulele player back then, and now I've switched mostly to guitar, um, inspired by my father, because he's a guitar player. Okay. Um, And I recently had an album come out, or an EP, I don't know the difference, (laughs) but um, it's called Eternal Angel, and it's out on all um, streaming platforms, Eternal Angel by Puddle, Yeah. and that came out, I can't remember when, actually. February? Last year. February yeah, last year. I think February, yep. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, in your time of learning ukulele and then you started releasing music in like 2019, mm-hmm. what do you feel like you've learned about yourself as an artist? Um, I'm very, I guess, you know, as a person, I'm very um, like out of nowhere and my thoughts are all over the place. So I don't have a very concise writing style. I think sometimes I write very straightforward forward, and mm-hmm. sometimes I write completely around the point. Hmm. Um, and I like that about myself. I think I like it better when I go around it instead of just going towards it because it could be about many different things um, to, to me and to everybody else that listens to it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm just wondering since you've been creating and releasing music for a long time. What was the transition like to doing that while being a college student as well? It was really hard. Yeah. Um, when I started, I was 14, and um, I was just in, um, I don't know, was I in ninth grade? I don't know. I think I was in eighth grade. Um, and I wasn't very good at school <laughs> growing up, and I didn't really care about it. So it wasn't like anything I was really paying attention to and all I wanted to do is make music. Yeah. And up to that point I had so much music to make just from the years. So it was like a lot all at once. And it was all I did for almost a year was just write and and record and put out. And hmm. um then when I got into high school, specifically um in senior year, it got pretty hard because I started to try and focus more on school, like I should have been. And um, my music kind of tapered off a little bit. I wasn't writing as much anymore. Yeah. Um, And then with college, it's it's, uh, even a little worse, you know. But I think with things like this, like the local lowdown, and I got invited to a show last semester, and um, um, things like that just get me inspired to like remember that I make music and that I want to remember to record because I do write I write a lot yeah but it's it's only a matter if I'm able to sit down and actually record it anymore because I'm just and so tired all the time yeah (laughs) yeah um but I have some stuff that I played today that isn't recorded yet so I'm gonna record that soon and produce it for real and upload it somewhere. <laughs> when you picked up ukulele, like when you were 14, did you just jump straight into writing songs or were there like covers? Was there like specific songs you wanted to learn? Like what made you start doing that? Um, actually, before I played ukulele, I played piano for many years. I think I started in fifth grade. I took lessons and I only really played like classical stuff. I didn't really write. Until maybe uh, seventh grade, I started Mm -hmm. to write songs on the piano. And then as soon as I got my ukulele, I was just like, I want to make songs on it right now. 
Um, and I was inspired to play it because I was a really big fan of Dodie and Dodie Clark and Cave Town and a lot of artists who were using ukulele at the mm-hmm. time. Um, and it's also easier on the fingers because yeah. I have little hands and especially then, I don't think I've grown actually, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I have more calluses on my fingers now. So, um, but I did want to learn, I wanted to learn a few songs by 21 Pilots at the time. Um, I did that too. Yeah. On the ukulele. <laughs> I wanted to, I think the first song I really learned was, um, Can't Help Falling in Love with You by Elvis Presley. When 21 Pilots also did it. covered <laughs> by 21 Pilots. Yes, that's why I wanted to do it. <laughs> and then I just, I knew, I already knew about chords, you know, from piano. So I just looked up how to play chords on ukulele and just wrote to it. It all just came out with no effort. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you played at the local lowdown live sessions last semester. What was that experience like for you? And how has it been to perform in a place like Fredonia that's like a bit smaller than where you used to live? Um, I like it. I like it a lot because it feels like more, I can't think of the word, like connected or intimate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Um, Because I had played when I was younger at the Lost Horizon in Syracuse in front of a lot of people. And I kind of don't even remember it. You know, Mm. it was like a lot of people and I kind of just was out of it. Um, And I'm really proud that happened. I wish I could go again. But um, I think being kind of an anxious person and struggling with like social things and performances, doing it like small, smaller is way better for me. And then just keep building. And I love doing the local lowdown uh, last year because I just had the best time. And Libby Reed was there. and um, Cornflake car. Yeah, Cornflake car. I was going to say Asia, but um, yeah. They were just so nice, and it was amazing to play with them um, and watch them. And, yeah, I was just excited because I hadn't got asked to play anywhere in a – yeah. Um, at least here. That was my first performance at school. So I was really happy about that. Yeah. Fredonia is such an interesting place to play live music to, whether it's like off campus, on campus, wherever, because it is such a small community, but there's so many people here that are interested in music one way or another, whether it's from the music school or music industry. And I think that's why, like, even when bands come to play here, they're like, Holy cow, like, it's yeah. like this small group of people, but they're all so devoted and interested. So, yeah, it, it's cool to hear that you've got to play here. Um, credit to Elena, f- actually, for pointing <laughs> out that Puddle existed to me. Oh, really? And then Puddle <laughs> existed in the local Lowdown concert. Mm, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So grateful for that. You mentioned that you received some support from your local radio station in Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Do they play your music often or...? Yes, I think um, it's a Sunday show called Locals Only. Nice. On 95X um, in Syracuse. And I think I'm played every Sunday, I believe, um, or, you know, most Sundays. Yeah. Sometimes I even check to see, like, what they're playing because I enjoy the the music that they play anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. if I'm on it or not. And I'll see songs of mine that I didn't even know were playing on the radio, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's hosted by Scott Dixon, and he has just been so supportive of me ever since I was 14. Wow. And it's so, like, it's so amazing because it really pushes you, you know. Because when I was 14, like, mus- of course, music was serious to me, but I wasn't sure if I was good enough. And then to have somebody who has these connections and has worked with so many musicians, like, support me was, like, it was crazy. And, yeah, he still plays my music and invites me to events all the time. So yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool to hear that you're gaining listeners in different parts of New York, too. Yeah. In terms of coming to college here and getting an audience and having an audience in Syracuse. Is that where you used to live? Yeah. Okay. In North Syracuse, but it gotcha. doesn't matter. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, well... As we mentioned, your most recent EP, Eternal Angel, came out 
last year in February. It's really fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I I love like the the melancholy vibe that it emits, and I like the acoustic instrumentation as well. Mm-hmm. Was that kind of a new thing for you, or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, before that, I I don't know if I ever really came out with a, a collection during twenty twenty no. 2021 and to 2022. I didn't really come out with a collection, but that was more more electronic era for me. Yeah. And um, I released a lot of singles at that time, and they were all just a synthesizer, and I was trying all this crazy stuff, and I really enjoyed it, but um, recently I've just been... The music I listen to has changed, hmm. of course, and... I listen to a lot more acoustic things now, and, like, I love finger picking, um, and I've been learning it. I'm not the best yet, but um, I love it so much. I want to incorporate it in, like, every song now. So yeah. um, when I did Eternal Angel, I was like, I want, like, acoustic and, like, real instruments now. Mm-hmm. And I worked with Jake Seitz, who I went to high school with. Um, he's an amazing producer, and he produced it for me, mixed it for me. I mean, he played the drums on any of them that have drums in it. Because <laughs> a lot of them were, you know, just guitar and me. Yeah. Maybe I did have um, synthesizer violins in a few songs. Yeah, I noticed that. It's yeah. one of the ones later on, I think. Yeah, it's in. I think it's in Divine and the last song, You By My Side, You By My Side. I actually don't remember a lot of my song names because they're named something different <laughs> In my computer, yeah. <laughs> so I don't even know. Um, a lot of your songs, especially on this EP, sort of center around romance in different ways, sometimes in yeah. more of a positive way or more of like a melancholy or sad way. Um, my favorite song on this EP was Evergreen Tree. It Thank was you. really beautiful when you sang, but you seem to be the one that can be blooming in every season of me. Mm-hmm. I was curious what like inspired that specific lyric. Mm, I was, you know, it, it's funny because it's so true. I was going through a lot with my relationship and a lot of ups and downs for nobody's fault. You know, it was nobody's fault. Mm-hmm. It was just situation like distance and um, and it was a really hard time and it was like, You know, you want to move on from somebody, but it's just not happening. And no matter how hard you try. And, like, when I was younger, I just would... I was really, like, fascinated by evergreen trees when I was younger because they weirded me out. Because (laughs) all the other trees lose their leaves, and it's the only one that doesn't. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe other trees don't, but... um, It just made me think, like... Isn't that a coniferous tree, right? Yeah, I think there's yeah, other trees that don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it just made me think, like, no matter what I do, like, I'm always going to want to be with um, the pers- the my boyfriend. <laughs> 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 and, um, like, there's no way around it, you know. And and I wanted to, like, be more independent or, or be somebody else. I wasn't, you know, at that time. And I was just, like, coming to terms with that, these emotions are here and they're not going away and there's nothing I can do about it and I should just enjoy it. And that is one of my favorites, I think, as well because it was it's probably the most emotional one for me just because I'm everything I say in it is just, like, everything I mean. Mm. And it came out perfectly, like, exactly how I was feeling at the time. And, like, don't text me and don't try to call. Like, just leave me alone, you know. <laughs> but you just can't stay away from people you, you're in love with, you know. So and would you say that topic was something, because you were talking about your writing process before, whether you're meandering around something or really just coming out and saying it. Yeah. That one's more just coming out. Yeah, that it. was just coming out and saying it, which I kind of beat myself up about sometimes because I want to be more, like, creative, I guess. But I love it, you know, and I think I shouldn't beat myself up about it, and it came out how I wanted it to, hmm. Yeah. I feel like sometimes when I hear songs like that where it just comes out and says it just so explicitly, it's it's kind of just like it's just such a human thing. Like, yeah, I agree, like some yeah. of those songs are just like human experience that you just can't avoid from being relatable for people. So I don't and, think it's a bad thing. Yeah, and now that I think about it, 
most of the songs I listen to are, are like straightforward. That. Yeah. And they'll even say, like, people's names in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I love that about it because it's just so human. And so, like, I can just feel what they're feeling even if I don't even know these people. I don't even know what's happening, you know? Right, right. And would you say those themes, do they work into the title in any way? Or is the title something separate for the, the EP? The title of the EP? Yeah. Um, it is, you know, eternal because... I can't get rid of him. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. <laughs> no matter how hard you try. Yeah, I don't want him to go away. But, um, yeah, like, I'm just internally, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's romantic, I guess. And then Angel, just because he's an angel, and it's how I felt. And I'm pretty sure every song is about him in one way or another. Some of them might be about some family members as well. But I kind of, like, interlace them together and don't really say which is which because mm. I think it adds something to it sometimes. Yeah. You talking about that feeling of being, like, happy and everything inspiring you kind of, like, makes me want to hear your take on the idea that, like, the tortured artist, like, needs to have, like, some negativity to be inspired. It seems mm-hmm. almost like you are totally inspired by things that just make you happy. Yeah. Um, I am. Yeah. I feel like when I go through something really hard and I'm miserable, a lot of stuff does come out, but it doesn't translate very well, I feel Mm -hmm. like. Um, But um, my first, like, few albums that came out were just, I was a miserable person. (laughs) And I was so upset and edgy and all this stuff. And Mm. um, But now it's like... I really don't have anything to complain about, um, except for I was thinking, I've been writing some songs just about, like, other issues and getting away from romance because I only ever write about it, you know. Um, And I'm just so happy in my relationship right now, and everything's going amazing. So I have nothing bad to write about. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and it feels really good, but it's bad because I want to write more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I have to find, you know, things that inspire me. It's a little harder, but... I'll probably just write more happy love songs coming forward. So you have a pretty distinct style in your music, um, and you have a lot of music, as we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, is there, like, a distinctive path that you follow when you decide the vibe of music you want to make, or do you kind of just go with the flow, like, at the point in time and it just comes out? Um, I think it depends on which song, but I do both. Um, When... I make songs that I know are going to be, have a specific vibe. Like, I made a song called um, I Wish I Was Born on Mars, I think it's called. Um, (laughs) And so I made it, like, spacey, spacey vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, Evergreen Tree I made to be, like, kind of fast and fresh. I wanted it to feel, like, fresh, like nature, you know, blooming, because it's like a like I think it's my fastest I strum in any song but um so I do sometimes but sometimes I just do whatever happens happens yeah is there a specific sound or genre that you haven't done yet that you'd really like to country country (laughs) yeah I'm not like I don't like I guess I don't actively listen to like modern country but I do really like older country or you know, Rhett from the Mythical Morning. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he made a song. Oh, really? He makes music, but one of his songs is called Believe Me, and it's just the best thing I ever heard, and it's like country. Really? And I love it so much, and I want to make something like that. And then Wicked Game, I can't remember who it's by, Chris something, um, inspires me as well, a song called Wicked Game. <laughs> and they're both country songs, and I just want to try it so bad. I've never been... I guess just a little bit of country influence, like Faye Webster, if you know her. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah, because she has a bit of, like, like the... Yeah, she's got I want that twang. noise. Yeah, twang. I was supposed to see her, and then COVID happened. Oh, that is so horrible. I never went back. Yeah. Yeah. I covered one of her songs, but it didn't come out anywhere. I covered it in a live stream, I think. Hmm. Um, And it was a lot of fun. So I want to do something like she does, or country influenced a little bit. Not too crazy little bluegrassy. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I've been 
trying to write like that, but we'll see where it takes me. Maybe I'll even do a totally different genre soon. <laughs> well, I think we're about ready to transition into our set list. Take it away, Puddle.
fade away A new religion is born When I see your face I pull you close And I breathe you in You are the light I feel within And hold my hand Whenever you need You are the God I feel in me The only God I'll ever But this just feels too real to ignore It's a lot, it's a lot, and I know it is Don't get caught, don't get caught in the difference I think I feel something changing me Cause you're the only God I'll ever know too much and I know it is Just let me be with the one within So pull me close You can breathe me in And I'll be the ghost You feel within I hold my hands To face up above You're the only
close enough I wanna see all of the violin till I throw Okay, then one more song. Thank you so much for that set, Ariel. We really appreciate you stopping by and 
playing your puddle tunes for mm-hmm. us. And I feel like you're already halfway towards the country sound covering the Massey Star yeah. song. So. <laughs> Thank you mm-hmm. for having me. <laughs> of course. So you performed at Chicks with Picks, um, which was an all-female performance. Um, with the music industry being very male-dominated, would you think? Would you say that was inspiring to be around your peers like that? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, weirdly enough, they were all country artists, and yeah, I was the only was one who that. wasn't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when I was younger, I was kind of nervous that I wasn't going to get maybe as popular because... I wanted to have um, a fan base a lot like bands that have all male, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, seeing now, you know, like Olivia Rodrigo is so big and Billie Eilish is so big. And mm-hmm. I'm really inspired by just their presence, you know, and how they've been able to cultivate, like, the audience, you know. So I was really – I was so happy to get invited to that. And the women there were amazing. Um, and they were country. And it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, over time, you've been adding more instrumentation to your songs, like mm-hmm. what we're talking about on your latest EP. And you also said that you've been a fan of bands over the years. Mm-hmm. Could you see yourself performing with a full band at some point? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I was in a band for a second, but it was kind of fake. You know, I okay. mean, it was mostly on the computer. Um and I was the only one who played an instrument. <laughs> mm. um, but I do want to be in, like, a band band. Um, and I've been working towards it, and just nothing has really panned out yet. Mm. And I would love to. have. I've actually played with my dad's band before, okay. like, when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and they've helped me, you know. But, yeah, I would love to, but I just don't know when. Like, I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah. Could you see yourself... Forming a band for Puddle, basically? Or would you mm. think it would be for something else? I think that maybe Puddle would just stay me. Mm. Um, but maybe, actually, if we performed out, I would like to have, like, more people with me, Yeah, I guess. But I do want to be in a band that's separate from just Puddle. I want to be a part of something with a different name, you know? Yeah. Pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to still be Puddle. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm still right. called Puddle, but I'm in a band that's called something different. You have so much music <clears throat> under Puddle, so it yeah. kind of has that identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Well, Fredonia is a great place to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I know. Yeah. Well, pertaining to your solo career that we're talking about. <laughs> hey there. Hey. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, what's up? Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, you've made a lot of music, and you're pretty good at it. Thank you. Um, do you... Do you produce it yourself as well? Um, I do it on my computer. I record on my computer. Yeah, that's what, okay. Yeah, with Logic Pro X or X Pro. I don't know (laughs) which way it goes. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know what? I'm not going to be very good at this question. (laughs) Um, I don't know what my microphone's called, and I don't know what my synthesis, like my MIDI is called. Um, (laughs) I guess I just want to know how, how do you record? What, What does it look like, like? You know, is it is it at your desk? Do you have just like mm. a little baby, baby MIDI keyboard? Is it a huge keyboard? Is yeah, it a um, grandpa keyboard. Do you have like a gigantic <laughs> audio interface, or is it just that little mm-hmm. guy? I have the Scarlet interface. It's like this mm, big, the red one. Yeah, um, and I was gonna put my hands on the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I've been trying to do it at my desk in my spare bedroom, but. I haven't been. I think that I kind of just get inspired in my bedroom and I don't want to leave. So I bring everything in there and I do it on my bed because I don't want to uh, go in my in to where the wooden desk is and sit on a wooden chair. I want to sit on my bed. Um, but I've recorded everywhere in my house <laughs> and in my father's house everywhere. So um, it looks like me tripping over cords every five <laughs> seconds and trying to figure out why it's not sounding how I want it to sound. (laughs) I'm not the best at it, but I just record it, and then I'll send it to Jake Zietz, my friend, um, and he'll – he has a different uh, system, and I'm not sure what it is, and he fixes it up for me. But sometimes I do just do it on Logic and and release it like that. Hmm. That is pretty cool. I never thought, like, recording on your bed. I'm trying to imagine, like, how that would – yeah, it's Probably. not 
a I'm, great I'm idea. Thinking about like the <laughs> mic, like where would you? I mean, I guess if you have one of those arms, like yeah, that. it's like a, it's kind of a tall one, and then I just put it all the way down, <laughs> and yeah. I sit on my bed, and I have the scarlet on my bed. <laughs> it's like wiggling <laughs> around, <laughs> and it's not a good idea. <laughs> but it's like it's cool. it's I don't want to get up. Yeah, yeah there you go. I just want to do it like that. That's part of it. I do often stand when I sing, though, when I record myself singing. Mm. Just jumping around on the bed. Yeah, I just start jumping on the bed to (laughs) record my vocals, yeah. Laying all the way reclined. Oh, I wish I could do that. (laughs) That'd be so awesome. (laughs) All right, I guess the last thing to ask is just what is next for Puddle? Is it another album, more live performances? Um, I there's nothing coming up live yet, but I'm hoping to get invited to things coming up. Um, and I'm always working on music like all the time. And some I played a new song today. She never did is what it's called. I love that one. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I only really I have a video on my YouTube channel, Puddle, um, and it's just an acoustic lo-fi little thing of it, a lot like what I did today. Yeah. No tambourine though. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm working on that recording and really just trying to make it sound exactly how I want to. It's a little difficult, but I'm going to push it and see where it goes. And if it comes out as a single, that's great. If it comes out with a bunch of other songs, that's even better, you know. Um, but I'm not going to, um, like, push myself to too far because mm-hmm. I have before and pushed out albums that I'm not – I didn't think were – as good as they could have been okay. if I spent more time, you know? Fair. Yeah. So I don't think any album's going to come out at least this semester. <laughs> but I do write fast, so I guess we'll see what happens. All right. Well, that concludes another episode of The Local Lowdown. Thank you so much, Puddle, for coming and performing on our show and doing this interview. It's been so much fun. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to The Local Lowdown on 88.9 WCVF The Voice and 89.5 WDVL The Inferno. We will be back next week with some more zesty local music. (laughs) Same Same time, time, same same place. place. Bye. Bye.